here what I'm doing is I've got two scope statements. First of all, I do what I did before and scope on the measure internet. And that simply means that everything in this block, this pair of scope and end scope statements, is now going to be now going to be the measure internet sales amount. Then I've got an inner block of scope and end scope. And here I'm saying take the existing context, the existing subcube that I've defined, and filter that down again so that it is filtered by this set, which is the set of all members on the calendar year hierarchy of the calendar year of the date dimension. So the calendar year level, sorry, of the calendar year hierarchy of the date dimension. And then once again, in the innermost part of this um, statement, I'm saying take this subcube and assign the value one to it. So the way of doing this is to read it from the inside outwards. I'm going to take the area of cells that is in context here and assign the value one to it. And this is going to be everything from the innermost area to the outermost scope block, which is going to be the subcube containing the set of all members on the calendar year level for the calendar and which is include which which has in context the measure internet sales amount. So let's take this, copy it, and paste it into Visual Studio and deploy. And what I'm going to do now is actually let's clear this. Reconnect. Internet sales map here. And you can see that for all of the years I've assigned the value 1. Now I've got a different value here for the grand total, the total a value of 5, and I'll explain why that's coming later on. But the important thing is that it's this group of cells that I've assigned to. And in fact, in like uh, country onto columns here, you can see that all of those cells that are associated with internet sales amount and all of those calendar years, they've all had the value 1 assigned to them. So this ability to nest scope statements allows us to build up very complex subcube definitions, uh, and it has obvious benefits for readability as well. It also has this kind of added effect that we can make assignments at different levels inside the nesting. So what we can do is something like this. Copy this. Here what I'm doing is, similar to what I've done before, create an outer scope block that says, first of all, let's create a subcube that is based on the measure internet sales map. So here, from this outer scope block, I'm saying let's scope, uh, let's create a subcube that contains just internet sales event. And then here, on the next line, I'm doing what I did before, scope on all of the years on the calendar year level of the calendar year hierarchy of the date dimension, set all of these values to one. And then inside that, I'm saying, well, actually overwrite the value of the year 2003 and make that equal to 2. So here I've got the kind of general case of making all of my years for internet sales amount equal to 1. And then I've got a kind of special case where I'm scoping again, overwriting again, but just the value of internet sales amount in the calendar year 2003 and making this equal to 2. So if I copy this, and paste this into Visual Studio, you'll see what So you can see now that the year 2003 has had its value overwritten and is now the value 2, but all the rest of the years have had their value overwritten with the value 1. 
So you can see that I can create a scope, I can make a general assignment, and then you can, I can have a special case and overwrite part of the subcube that I've been building up uh, with yet another different value. So let's look in a bit more detail about what we can and can't include in the subcube. So as I said, a subcube is this area of the cube that we want to overwrite. And unfortunately, there are a set of rules that we have to obey when we're defining subcubes. We can't just override any general bunch of cells inside the cube that we want to be able to override. Um, what we have to do is basically overwrite a kind of a regular shaped area of the cube. And you know, the name subcube suggests this. We can't just take any random set of cells. It's got to be a kind of mini cube, like a, a regular shaped set of cells. So a subcube is defined as being by creating a set of one or more members from different hierarchies in the dimension. So here is our, here's my wonderful graphic design skills yet again, here's a simple cube. We can say, well, let's overwrite just a single cell or a bunch of cells that you know, form a block along one particular hierarchy or a number of cells across what are in fact um, three different hierarchies. So the limitations I talked about are as follows. They're quite difficult to understand, um, but the way to understand the rules is to think of your cube purely in terms of the attribute hierarchies on there. Um, the attribute hierarchies on your cube are, let me open up something like the product dimension. These are all of the attributes on your cube and everything out here is actually going to be turned into an attribute hierarchy. User hierarchies, and what I'm saying is ignore these when you're defining your um, subcubes. Always think in terms of the attribute hierarchies because these are what actually define the space of your cube. These user hierarchies are really views on top of your attribute hierarchies. So when we're defining a subcube, the rules we have to follow are these. When we're creating a subcube, we can create a set of, we can filter um, that subcube by generating a set of members from any given attribute hierarchy. And that set of members has to contain either one member from an attribute hierarchy several members from an attribute hierarchy, not including the all member from that hierarchy, or every single member from an attribute hierarchy, including the all member. 